A local Adelaide musician with a global sound, his journeys, experiences and life observations shine through in his lyrics. A unique blend which is often referred to as world music. A vision of roots, reggae, funk and just about everything in between. The j Ho band is described as an eclectic sound of global proportions. I catch up with Jay to find out more about his music, inspirations and the messages within the lyrics. I started playing instruments when I was about four years old. I started playing, uh, my parents bought me an organ for my fourth birthday, a big, big organ. And uh, I started playing that about four and then when I was about six years old, I started playing guitar. And then uh, from then on, from then on in, we just, uh, my, my dad was actually in the Air Force, so we traveled all over Australia. And uh, I was always getting new, new teachers and uh, new music wherever I went. And kind of just continued from there. Music is pretty much all I ever wanted to do. From um, from a really young age, and uh, yeah, it's always always been my dream to be able to you know tour the world and and uh, and play play music around the world, which I've managed to be able to do for uh, you know, five or six years now as a full time career, which has been incredible. So my music is really world influenced. I get classified as world music a lot, but it's really not world music. It's a little bit of everything. Lots of love songs and all that sort of stuff inspired by you know, love and direct things in my life. And But really, uh, you know, family and friends inspire my music a lot. Um, but I think just the traveling, that's really why I like to travel so much and it inspires my music. The different things I get to see in different places, the different people I meet, and the different things going on in the places that I'm at at the time. So how do you actually write your songs? It really depends. Every song is completely different. Um, sometimes it's just the little, littlest things that set off my uh, inspiration. Um, Rat Race, uh, the, the song about the drought of the last album was, um, I actually woke up, I, I had, I'd, I'd been out of Australia for about a year and a half and I came back to uh, the river, uh, the river, river Murray uh, in Goolwa there and was just mind blown by the, uh, the the lack of water there and I could see you know the river the, the bottom of the river almost all the way across the river um, that that song uh, you know obviously about the drought I, I woke up the next morning at about 3 a.m. and wrote uh, Rat Race I, I woke up and wrote all those lyrics in one go and fell back to sleep at about 6 a.m. and the next day I got up and started working on the chords and the song and it was finished within about four or five hours uh, that doesn't happen very often. Sometimes I'll spend six months or a year working on a song. The lyrics of Rat Race are really quite powerful. How do people react to these stories in Australia? Australia? It's just amazing. No one has any idea about you know, specifically the drought in, in Australia. Uh, everyone's completely shocked by stories like my best friend's baby boy turning three years old without getting to ever experience the rain um, in his lifetime. And uh, yeah, definitely it, uh, it blows people away to tell those stories. And I really try and, and spread the word. You obviously have the same passion for the environment as you do music. How do you combine the two to help spread the message of environmental importance? I'm always looking for different uh, organisations to work with. Music seems to couple in so well uh, with all that stuff. Um, I work with a couple of different uh, places. River Alert uh, actually contacted me um, after hearing a few of the tracks off my last album about doing uh, some shows promoting um, you know, River Alert, which is just basically promoting awareness of the, the, the river systems problems and issues. And it's, it's nice to be able to enlighten people with funk and rock and reggae amongst all the other stuff. John Butler once said the quest for a good gig is addictive. Do you agree? Yes, definitely. The quest for the gig and you know, the festivals, the music festivals are just always incredible vibes. People are so receptive, so happy for you to be there. And um, you know, it brings your playing up to another level. It's one thing uh, when you play for a crowd that doesn't really care. You play okay. 
but when you play for a crowd that really wants to hear your music, it brings the music and it brings the band up just massive levels. And that's something that you see with bands like the John Butler Trio when before they even get out on stage, the vibe of the crowd is just so intense. The love and the desire to hear their music is just so intense that they walk out onto a stage with that feeling, you know, before they even pick up their guitar or whatever. It's just uh, it's an incredible, incredible feeling. You started that. In 10 years time, where do you hope you'll be? Um, I just hope to continue my music career. I don't, I mean, all the kind of the fame and fortune that goes along with being, you know, super successful would be wonderful, but it's not something that I really desire. Um, I, I feel like I'm really successful already, so that's a massive personal achievement. Uh, the fact that I get to just travel and play full time as just a musician is incredible. Um, but I'd like to keep releasing more albums and um, yeah, definitely get more airplay and get more, you know, I'd like to be able to tour my own country um, and have people waiting uh, at, at, at each show, you know, have that vibe where people are waiting to hear your music when, I, when, when you get there. That's um, something that's really special to me. And as the first breeze of the day blows the ash from the coals in a very special way, the sunlight appears the birds wake my ears, new life sees this first day As the wind blows the clouds away I see the sign and you know it's divine I see, I see the sign and it's something divine <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>